Welcome friends, in this video let's discuss about Indian paintings. Indian paintings has a very long tradition and history in Indian art and the earliest Indian paintings were rock paintings of prehistoric times. Prehistoric, that is the Paleolithic times and these are petroglyphics, that means the rock painting on the rocks which was found in the places like Bhimbetka rock shelters. It was as old as 30,000 years old and some Ajanta caves, paintings in Ajanta caves, it was as old as 2nd century BC to 650 AD and we know from this that Indian painting has been very 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 old okay and there has been very important characteristics of Indian painting is that there has been aesthetic continuum okay continuum extend from early civilization to the present day the principles which are followed and the style and form which are followed in Indian paintings has been in continuation from the early civilization to the present day okay and what is the reason for this continuation of the style and principles in Indian painting? This is due to the Sadanga of Indian painting. So this Sadanga is a codified principle of the Indian art. That means the principles are codified in the form of Sadanga. Okay? It was codified during 1st century BC by the unknown author and Sadanga means six limbs of Indian painting. That means six principles which must be kept in mind while, while undertaking paintings. And the Vatsayana, the famous author of the Kama Sutra during 3rd century AD referred the previous principles for Indian art and included those things in his book Kama Sutra. Okay, and let's look at the six principles uh, which should be kept in mind while painting. This includes six limbs. First is Rupa Bheda. That means Rupa means the appearances. Okay, Rupa Bheda means the knowledge of appearances. The appearances must be proper in in paint painting okay the second principle is pramanam that means the measurement proper measurement correct perception measurement and structure here pramanam means there should be proper measurement between the different organs of the uh, body that means the from eyes the distance between the eyes and distance from the eyes to the nose and the length of the nose to the length of the lips likewise so this is the pramanam the correct perception measure and structure and the third principle is bhava here not only the perception measurement should be there they should be in they should be infused with feelings okay feelings of forms this is called bhava and the fourth is lavanya yojanam that means infusion of grace and artistic representation the fifth is sadrushyam that means it should be similar to what it wants to represent okay the painting should be similar to what it wants to represent the sixth is varnika bhanga that means artistic manner of using brush and colors so these are the six principles which must be kept in mind while painting which, which it, it, it makes wonders so and let's look at the generous genre of indian paintings so broadly indian painting can be divided into two important groups these are called murals and miniatures these murals these murals are the painting on the large structures for example walls okay and this painting on large structure executed on the walls of solid structure as, as present in the Ajanta Caves and Kailasananda Natha Temple and the second type is miniatures. These miniatures paintings are executed on a very small scale. Uh, for example, uh, in the books or albums or perishable materials like cloth and paper. Okay, These miniature paintings are, uh, are, are popularized by Mughal, Mughal rulers. Uh, it was the glorious period uh, for miniature painting as well as the Pala ruler, Pala rulers and Rajasthani school of painting also has prominence in the miniature paintings and different uh, subgroups under Rajasthani painting that is the Bundi, Kishangar, Jaipur, Marwar and Mewar these are also the miniature paintings. So under mural paintings as we saw in Ajanta and Kailasananda temple mural paintings can be done through, through two ways one is true fresco method second is tempora or fresco seco method and a true fresco method before the performing painting paintings are done when the surface wall is still wet so that the pigments go deep inside the wall surface so the wall surface surface is made wet okay and while well it is still wet the paintings are done so that it the pigments go deep inside the wall so these are natural pigments which were used earlier so this this makes the permanency of the painting and the second method is tempora or fresco seco method under this the lime is plastered on the surface on which the painting has to be done and 
this has this will be allowed to dry first and then the wall is drenched again with the fresh lime so on which the paintings are done this is this is the fresco seco method so these are the two important genres of indian painting that is murals and miniature and in the mural painting that is the on the wall painting we found the prominence during 2nd century bc to 10th century ad more than we found these mural paintings in more than 20 location, locations during this period uh, in, in the form of natural caves rock cut uh, chambers and other things the most important paintings include including ajanta caves bag caves sitan vasal caves amramalai cave ravan chaya rock shelter kailasanta temple in elora caves and these are the important uh, uh, paintings and i am going to discuss uh, when in the separate videos about this and the theme the important theme of uh, in these paintings is religious okay and uh, for example in ajanta caves various buddhist paintings are done and various jataka paintings are done and the theme include both buddhist jainist and uh, and hindu themes here in the mural painting and let's look at the different schools of painting which are existing in india and i'm going to give only the introduction uh, to these different schools and i will be making separate videos on the particular schools uh, so that it should not come confuse you uh, everything should not be uh, put in a single video it, it makes uh, confusion okay and in this video i'm going to give only the introduction the first is mughal school the mughal school the prominency is in the miniature paintings so these are painted on albums small pieces of paper and uh, and uh, this uh, on the clothes so miniature uh, painting is prominent here and this mughal school of painting is characterized by secular paintings as well as aristocratic painting aristocratic painting means the prominence is given to the the lifestyles of uh, the kings and emperors and also the the theme is secular here not the religious please remember okay and this school of painting inspired other regional paintings like deccan school of painting so i am going to explain in the, in the next video about this mughal school and the second school of painting is deccan school as i mentioned earlier this has been inspired by the uh, inspired by the mughal school of painting in the area of miniature painting but they also included their localized uh, styles and philosophies okay and under deccan school we have uh, ahmadnagar school bijapur golconda and hyderabad so these four are under deccan school and these two are separate under south indian school that is the tanjavur school in tamil nadu and mysore school in karnataka okay all together with deccan school and tanjavur and mysore school this this completely called as south indian school of painting okay and this this painting is from uh, from mysore school so the predominantly uh, the gods are depicted in this and these paintings are much sought after during festivals okay this is about deccan school the second is third is rajasthan school of painting rajasthan and central indian school of painting here the prominence is given to the life history of lord krishna and various stories of ramayana and mahabharata okay and this is a religious theme this has a religious theme and this the various different uh, uh, branches of this school are malwa mewar bundi kota marwar bikaner and kishangarh school so these are different uh, branches i'm going to cover uh, these things in single video later and the pahari school this is uh, present in uh, himachal pradesh and jammu and kashmir that is the hill states northern hill states of india and this is also characterized by the life, life history of uh, uh, shri krishna and uh, and other romantic scenes okay and this school also has different branches that is the basohi basoli guler in uh, kashmir and kangra kulu and mandi so these are the diff different uh, branches under pahari school and apart from these regional schools there has been independent school of painting in india this include this these are not uh, uh, associated with any region or these are not associated with any particular religion or a uh, ruling class these are independent this include kalighat painting in kolkata so this has had prominence during british period uh, various uh, uh, hindu uh, goddesses and gods are depicted as well as the day to day socio economic situations were depicted uh, in the kalighat painting so this is the this is a form of kalighat painting and the second is madhubani painting in uh, mithila in bihar the third is phad painting in bilwada rajasthan 
and Kalamkari painting in Andhra Pradesh and uh, finally the Kolam. Okay, these are all the independent school of painting. Uh, thank you. This is an introduction to the Indian paintings and in the coming videos I am going to cover the different schools of painting and separate videos. So please do not make confusion. Uh, uh, observe the finest parts of these videos and like the video, share it on Facebook and subscribe. Thank you. Thanks for watching.